Small town disc jockeys very often receive unfamiliar recordings to be played on the air. Here's a case in point where a hillbilly disc jockey received an album of records from Gigi, which stars Maurice Chevalier and Hermione Gingold. And here's a nice looking record package in from New York. We ain't heard it yet. It looks like the one that's gonna be a good one. It's featuring that Maurice French Chevalier and then Herman Guinea Gold in songs from Gigi. Now stay tuned to America's favorite penal program, What's My Line? This humorous transposition of words occurred on one of your favorite nighttime mystery programs. What you in for, buddy? Last night. How much time you get? 99 years. 99 years? How'd you get called? Some dirty squeal pigeon stooled on me. Radio and television studios are carefully locked when programs are on the air. Here's a case where one radio station was too careful, and the result was the locking out of a performer who left the studio for a moment to get a drink of water with his microphone still on. Hey, come on, who locked the door? Come on, come on, there's no time to fool around. Come on, I'm on the air. Open the door. Well, what the hell's the matter with you? The fabulous Davy Crockett fad was climaxed with this announcement. Calling all parents, calling all kids, here's your chance to buy a Davy Crockett bed. Yes, friends, Hunt's Furniture Store has Davy Crockett beds. It's a twin-size bed, just right for the kids, with scenes of Davy Crockett in action on the mattress. Let's tune in on your radio kitchen of the air and hear about a new marinara sauce recipe. For a heavenly Italian dinner, that your entire family will enjoy. Try Chef Boy Artie's marijuana sauce. Here's how the governor of the Virgin Islands was inadvertently introduced to a radio audience. And now, ladies and gentlemen of the radio audience, it gives me a great pleasure to introduce you to the Virgin of Governor's Island. Our next record is dedicated to all you gals who don't treat us. Oh hell! Our next record is dedicated to all you gals who don't treat us. Oh, Our next record is dedicated to all you gals who don't appreciate us men enough. A hard man is good to find. I, I mean, a good man is hard to find. The speed with which radio and television receive special bulletins from the various wire services leaves little time for proper rehearsal as evidenced by this newsworthy item. And here's a further bulletin about the train wreck, the news of which has just reached the station. According to latest reports, more than a score of passengers suffered injuries near Carrollton, Missouri. The train was a Santa Fe chafe scream the, the train was a Santa Fe Chafe, scream, lion, oh, I give up. You'll hear more news about this derailment later at 7 p.m. We return you now to our regularly scheduled program. Damn, I wish they'd get me the copy to these damn programs sooner. So go to your neighborhood movie and see Frankenstein, starring Boris Karloff in a chiller diller that is guaranteed to make your end stand on hair. That is, to make your end stand up. After her apprehension by local authorities, Miss Ellen Benson was confined to a menstrual institution for an indefinite period. Let's listen to this audience participation program, which featured servicemen as contestants. Hi, I see we have a man in uniform. What's your name, sir? Uh, Private First Class John Montfrey, sir. A and you're in the Army? The, the Army Air Force. Uh, married? Oh, yes, sir. In fact, I'm on my honeymoon right now. Newlywed? <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I see you have a camera there. What in the world are you doing with a camera? <laughs> well, you got to do something in the daytime, you know. <laughs> <laughs> In radio, complete silence usually indicates something technically wrong at the studio. Here's a case where the engineer became panicked by an unforeseen silence. His death is a severe loss to me personally and to the community at large which he served so well and faithfully. 
I ask you all to join me in one minute silence in contemplation of this fine, devoted public servant. Now here's another time check, 7.35 a.m. And while your coffee's brewing, let's take a continuing look at the news. In the Asia area, today more heavy farting reported on the China front. Sportscasters sometimes are carried away by the excitement of the moment. Here's one play-by-play -play announcer who was thrown for a loss when he came out with this classic. The set has passed the ball back, and there goes the quarterback. The uh, new substitution number 21. He's fading into the end zone for a quick fist, a kiss, a pat, a whatever it is. And it's complete on the 40-yard line. We fumbled that one, but it's complete on the 40-yard line. Today's special, a 1953 Ford station wagon with radio and heater, light blue, a terrific buy for $1,300. Remember, it's in immaculate conception. Stenographers who type mimeographed scripts sometimes finish a commercial on a page that has to be turned, thereby making it difficult for a commercial announcer. Tums will give you instant relief and assure you no indigestion or distress during the night. So try Tums and go to sleep with a broad smile. In Washington, plans have been announced in connection with the festivities and ceremonies for the arrival of Premier Khrushchev. There is still some doubt, however, as to whether the Russian visitor will receive a tickle tape parade up Fifth Avenue. One of the chief problems confronting the networks is the audience participation program, where there is no control over what contestants say. Let's listen to one of the airways' best-known quiz programs that became the victim of this contestant's spontaneity. Now, it's time we got on with our game here, which we know is double or nothing. And I want to explain to our first contestant, Miss Anna Miles. Right, Anna? Okay, Anna, I want to explain how we play this here. We play, we have a $2 question, a $4 question, a $6 question, and a $10 question. You know, any money you win on those, you can take away. Sit down, take it. Then if you want to play double or nothing, you can go for a $20 question, you know, and you want to go on top of that, you can go double or nothing for $40. Now, are we all clear for the game, Anna? Right. Let's square off. Anna, you tell me you're a waitress, right? Right. What did you do before that, Anna? I was in uh, the Navy. You were in the Navy? Navy nurse. Uh, you were a Navy nurse? Where were you a Navy nurse? Well, I was in Cragador, 19 months. You were and captured? I was, yes, I was. I was in Jeff prison camp. You were in a Jeff prison camp for how long? Then? Well, I was there the whole 19 months, and the three months, the first three months we went, we wasn't bothered. Mm -hmm. But then after that, rather, I we were certainly bothered. Gee, I'd rather see you win here today than anybody else up here, I swear. I'd like to win. Uh, you're not married? No. Where's your, where's your family from? Where's your dad from? Well, my dad is from northern Michigan. He's what a casket do? maker. A casket maker? Right. <laughs> he was waiting for me. <laughs> oh, Anna, tell me, have you had any unusual experiences in your work as a waitress? Oh, there's several. Oh, yeah, for instance, anything that uh, we could do with a daytime audience? Do you know what I mean? Oh, sure. All right, what? One is, uh, yesterday I ran into... At he didn't embarrass the man that's in the audience. Yeah. But uh, he asked me a very question that I didn't know how to answer, but anyway, I had him. Yeah. He asked me, uh, is this his friend? I went to the doctor and he's very sick. Yeah. So I don't know what to do and he says, I don't know what to tell him. Do you? Mm hmm Well, right away I said, yes, maybe I can. I don't know. Yeah. I said, what the trouble was? He said, well, he can't go out nice. He can't, can't eat. Uh -huh. Can't do nothing. Poor guy. And he said, he hasn't seen his wife away on a vacation. He said, so what do you think we should do with it? Well, I, mean, I didn't know what to answer there. So I said, well, I don't know. What's your suggestion? He said, well, I think you should get a good-looking girl like you and take her home and just have a big screwing party. I well, said, what? No. I said, why Anna, don't I go down to the, to the hardware and why get a screw? Why don't, why don't we go on with the, uh, with the uh, questions we have here for Campbell's soup? What is your favorite kind of Campbell's soup? What is your favorite kind Vegetable. of camera? Vegetable. Vegetable, all right. Put Anna down. An engineer was responsible for this blooper. 
he accidentally threw a switch that cut off the local program and substituted the current network show. It's time now, ladies and gentlemen, for our featured guest, the prominent author, lecturer, and social leader, Mrs. Elwood Dodge, who is able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. So if you have wash day troubles, put an end to them with a really modern detergent. Send immediately for a free dirty day supply. Turning to the world of golf now, word has just reached us that in order for amateur golfers to participate in this major tournament, they will first have to qualify sexually. I think you find that sectionally. We take you now to the BBC in England. Hollywood stars, as well as those here in London, are usually faced with the problem of losing weight before starting a new picture. But not in the case of the talented Shelley Winters, who in her latest picture, The Diarrhea of Anne... Oh, The Diary of Anne Frank, found that she had to gain 53 pounds. When asked how this was done, she replied she had to go on a very strict, high colonic diet. Oh, mercy. And now we have a very attractive young lady here at our microphones. What's your name? Mrs. Renee Robertson. And what are you doing in town? I'm on my honeymoon. Your honeymoon. Well, are you enjoying it? Oh, I'm enjoying every inch of it. 